So what are some candlestick patterns you can use to make money? In this video, I'm gonna go into some candlestick continuation patterns that will give you strong signals so you know you're not just being greedy and chasing a move, but actually trading like a pro. Hey, how's it going? On this channel, I teach you the steps I took to go from trading with a full-time job to trading as a full-time job. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And today, we're going into candlestick continuation patterns. So the saying goes, buy low, sell high. And that generally works theoretically with most markets and stocks because they do go through a cycle of up and down. But some stock trends are so strong that they will be what seems like only one directional. And this makes it hard to buy into without feeling like you're chasing or getting greedy. That's the idea of these continuation patterns is that even though a stock could be at all time highs or all time lows, the pattern tells you that it's highly likely that the trend is gonna continue. Some key points to make about these continuation patterns is you always wanna trade with the trend. If you have a bullish continuation pattern in a bullish trend, that's a strong signal. But if you have a bullish continuation pattern in a bearish trend, that can be a mixed signal. The idea is you want the signal and the trend to line up because that'll give you the highest probability of it going in the right direction. Also with any pattern, it's never an exact science. If you draw some kind of trend line for a pattern and the stock breaks through that trend line by just a little bit or even a decent amount, but it recovers the pattern, the pattern is still in place. It's more about the overall pattern and what that shows you, not drawing the lines and having it perfectly follow those lines that you drew. For our first pattern, we have a bullish flag or flag out. And like all of these patterns, we need a trend in place. And for this one, we have a uptrend in place already. The idea of this pattern is that it makes a what looks like a flag with the stock chart. And as you can see, we have that here created by these candles that make this strong vertical up move. And then the chart goes into a more choppy section, making that flag. The whole idea with this pattern is that even in the strongest of trends, there might not be pullbacks, but there are moments of pause. And that's what this shows us, that this stock is taking a pause or a breather before its next leg higher. Even though in this chart, the stock actually broke below our flag and potentially broke our pattern. But the idea is that it did end up recovering the pattern and coming back into that channel that we drew. How you can play these and buy into these is you can either buy them, try and buy them at the bottom of the channel or anywhere in the flag, or you can wait for it to break out of the flag with a really strong confirmation of either volume or it just spends a few days above the flag. So as you can see here, it's spent about nine to 10 candles above that flag, which would really give you a confirmation that it is breaking out of this flag and it's gonna continue higher and continue with that huge trend that it had in place beforehand. Here's another bull flag example. And again, initially we have that trend in our favor and the direction of the flag pattern that we're looking at. And we have this initial solid up move creating the pull of that flag these never are really vertical exactly like a vertical pole for a flag but the idea is that the stock has moved up rapidly towards the place where we draw the flag and so here we can draw this flag and creating that pattern with this flag it's somewhat downsloped and not like a flat channel like before, but the pattern remains in place as a still a strong continuation pattern that will show that the trend is gonna keep going higher. 
And as you can see, as it broke out of this channel and gapped up here, the trend continued in a strong upwards trend. So our next pattern is a wedge pattern. The whole idea behind this pattern is that, again, you always have that trend in place, but the stock was volatile and then it turns into being really unvolatile and creates this triangle or wedge. And the idea is once it gets into the point of that wedge is that it has to break out of that wedge somehow and that'll usually be in the direction of the trend that was previously made. Wedges don't always look just like this one. They can be in different orientations of that triangle. But the main idea is that the stock came up in and created that wedge with the idea that this is a continuation pattern and then the stock is now going to continue that trend that it already had once it breaks that wedge. How you go about drawing the trend lines for these wedges is first you gotta spot the wedge. And once you do that, you draw the lines along either the top trend line that you see or the bottom trend line or support line that you see. So for here, we would want to draw a line along the tops of these candles that are forming this downtrend. And then at the bottom, we would see this support line get created by these candles that are roughly bottoming out in the same spot. Again, it doesn't have to be an exact science. You can move these lines around pretty loosely and it will still create this wedge for you. The main idea again is to look at the whole of the pattern and see that it's making a wedge in an already established uptrend and that once it breaks out of this wedge to the upward side, it'll continue that upward trend. Here's an example of that same wedge, but in a downward trending market. The bottom of the wedge is created by this support level that the stock holds for quite a while. But then even after a bounce, the stock makes this downward trend, creating that wedge for us. Using that wedge and the idea that the stock was in a previous downtrend, we could have looked to short the stock or bet that the stock was gonna go down once the stock broke out of this wedge. For this stock, we can see that both sides of the wedge are actually more in a trend. The bottom is in an upward trend and the top is in a downward trend. The only way to really know where these are gonna go is using the direction of the trend and as well as seeing that it breaks out in the direction that you want it to. With the idea that this was in an uptrend already, you would hope and guess that it's gonna break to the upside. You always wanna wait for that confirmation of the stock breaking to the upside, but when it does, you know that it will be a strong pattern to buy into. As this wedge developed, you could have seen that the stock started breaking out of the initial trend line that you drew, and you could have redrawn the trend line to being a little bit of a better trend line, which would have given you a better signal. You can always try and redraw these and reevaluate them as they develop so you can get the best signal possible. So the next continuation pattern is a channel. Now, unlike the wedge and the flag out, this one is more showing you that the trend is still in place and that there are buying opportunities in that trend. To draw these channels, it just takes two trend lines of either resistance or support to make that channel. The idea is once you draw these two lines, you know where to buy and sell throughout the market. So once this channel is drawn, you could buy it at the bottom of the channel and then with the idea of selling it somewhere near the top. And then as the stock fluctuates throughout the channel, you can know really where you are in the market and if the market is overbought and oversold, really giving you a strong trigger to buy or sell or know when you should get in or get out. What happened for this channel is once the stock broke out of the channel, it actually started an even stronger uptrend. And the crazy part about looking at this channel is you can see that the stock bounced in the channel and then once it broke out of the channel, it actually came and bounced off the top 
of the channel resistance line, essentially turning it from resistance into support. It used that line as support and then started this huge trend upwards that you would be able to buy into either on the break of that channel or when it came down and hit the top of that channel as support. As this market broke to the upside through creating that new trend as it broke out of that channel, it actually eventually crashed. And this is the stock market in the beginning of the 2018 year. And you can see that it came down to our support line drawn from this channel previously. You can see that here it bottomed at that support level and tapped it almost three times. These trend lines that you draw on these large time frame graphs, this chart being a daily chart, can be really powerful. This would have been a great buying opportunity to essentially buy the bottom of the market. And if you miss it the first time, it gave you two more opportunities to buy in at that support level. Channels don't have to necessarily be in just uptrend channels. They can be any direction. They can be sideways or downwards channels. The idea is that this is a strong way to just spot the trend of the market and keep you focused on where the market is going to go and what is a crazy out of the blue move or what is a normal move in the current market conditions. Our last pattern is the cup and handle pattern. Now, this pattern actually has some of a pullback, but the idea is that even with a pullback, it allows you to identify that there's still going to be a continuation in the trend. Just like all the patterns, you always want to trade with the trend. And here we have an uptrend with the idea of that this is just going to signal a pause in the upward trend and give us an entry point to buy into that next upward move that it's gonna make. How this pattern works is the stock comes up to a high that it makes and that becomes a resistance level. And the stock then begins to sell off, but as it bottoms out and starts trending back higher, it kind of makes a U-shaped bottom that creates that cup pattern. Usually you want it to be somewhat gradual in both directions. It's not perfect every time, just like all these patterns. In this pattern, we can see that there is a huge down day as one of the days. And then there was also a huge up day, but the pattern still is there and pretty strong. As this pattern continues to form, the price comes back up to that resistance line that we previously saw and begins to actually sell off out of our cup pattern, creating the handle pattern. And the idea is that there is this initial sell off from that. And then the stock breaks out of this downward channel that creates the handle of the cup and handle pattern. And then once it breaks out of that, it begins the continuation of that upward trend that we previously saw. If you miss the initial breakout from that handle part of the pattern, there was still a buying opportunity when the stock came back down and touched that old resistance level and turned it into a support level. Quite frequently, when stocks break through a level that is either resistance or support, it'll flip it to the other side. So here we have this previously resistance level and once the stock broke through that with this pattern, it came back down and touched it and used it as a support level. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. If you wanna learn more about candlestick patterns, here's a video on candlestick reversal patterns. And I have a playlist here of just candlestick patterns and how to read candlestick charts in general. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you wanna learn more how to trade in the stock market and leave a like and ask any comments or questions down below.